Okay, thank you very much for uh, this second opportunity to talk about uh, my experiences <clears throat> from one from the university, uh, the other from high school uh, about <clears throat> uh, using trans transdisciplinarity for curriculum integration. Uh, and uh, this uh, two um, uh, types of experience came from uh, mainly from um, my work at Akita uh, International University, where for several years I was working on the preparation of new major concentration fusion of science, technology, and humanities. Uh, the background of this uh, is I was involved in creation of this Akita International University. In, uh, it was the uh, uh, year 2003. Uh, I was working with uh, Dr. Uh, Mineo Nakajima and uh, our university was in some sense, like especially for Japan, a miracle. Mm -hmm. We managed within eight years to go to the top in rankings of uh, Japanese universities from education. This university was not research oriented. So all this uh, high ranking was about education. Mm -hmm. In 2013, um, Dr. Nakajima passed away and uh, I um, uh, was no more Dean of Academic Affairs uh, all the time before I was Dean of Academic Affairs and I was working on development of, of the university. And uh, after some time, there was a question what to do because uh, basically the format of the program which we uh, developed uh, started to be emulated by many other Japanese universities. Like one of these key points, which are for us today is not so important, is that all um, education at AIU uh, was and is in English. So this was something new, uh, which was considered impossible. But by um, 2013, basically uh, 20 or more universities open uh, this kind of college, which was uh, like more inter internationalized. So the question was, uh, what can we do to uh, maintain our position as, as a, a leader of uh, education, undergraduate education in, in Japan. And this was like why I started to work. I became again uh, later Dean of Academic Affairs and I uh, was working with a group of uh, faculty on the preparation of this uh, uh, new major concentration, which was called Fusion of Science, Technology and Humanities. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this was like uh, uh, big part of what I'll be talking today about, but also in 2003, in preparation for Akita International University, I was working for prefectural government. And because my salary was paid by board of education, I uh, had obligation to teach one day uh, in high school. And I consider this as an opportunity to experiment uh, and uh, I taught a course. This course was actually to two different uh, groups of students. So this was one course, but uh, because students in Japanese high schools uh, at some point uh, switched to preparation for entrance examinations to universities, so uh, students could not uh, 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 spend so much time in things which, which were uh, actually they were appreciated by, by uh, the high school, but it was too much uh, taken from their preparation for examinations. So these were two different groups, but uh, basically uh, the idea was the same. I used different 
subjects I'll, I'll come back to, the, to, to this later. So, uh, but even when we are talking about this preparation for the major concentration uh, in fusion of science, technology and humanities, uh, a lot of this uh, experience which I had could be applied to any level of education. Uh, because of course, courses which we prepared, which we developed, uh, were um, prepared for students who are much more advanced, but even topics could be the same. It is just a matter how far we go in, uh, in uh, this plan. So I think that it could be uh, relevant uh, even uh, if uh, it is uh, not at the level of uh, university education. So uh, our, or, uh, I'm not sure if uh, those who are here today uh, could uh, participate in my earlier presentation. So I will start from explanation of what I mean when I'm talking about transdisciplinary, um, uh, trans transdisciplinarity. So uh, this is, starts from the bottom that we have multidisciplinary inquiry where basically we have um, uh, at this level minimal interaction between uh, different uh, parts of, uh, of uh, study. Uh, there is acknowledgement of the value of diverse uh, complementing perspectives on the subject of inquiry, but uh, uh, all uh, comparisons or interactions between uh, these different uh, parts are minimal and are basically about outcomes. Uh, the next level uh, is uh, interdisciplinary inquiry. Here uh, it is uh, more uh, integrated, but integration is not uh, complete. So this means that there is uh, mutual fertilization of uh, 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 these different lines of inquiry. Uh, so there is, uh, at this level, there is some uh, uh, mutual translation or interpretation of concept principles and partial re results between the contributing disciplines. But basically, uh, methodology uh, of, of inquiry uh, is uh, maintained like separate. And so uh, there is like uh, basically the same methods which are within particular discipline are used in interdisciplinary inquiry. It's only that there is some form of interaction. And transdisciplinary inquiry, I understand as uniform conceptual uh, framework and uh, methodology, uh, at least to some extent, methodology is uh, uniform uh, with possible ramifications reflect, reflecting ontological distinctions. So the difference is at interdisciplinary inquiry, we have, uh, these this, uh, divisions are coming more from epistemological uh, side. Uh, there are just different methods of, uh, of uh, doing research or doing uh, inquiry, uh, where at, at transdisciplinary level, um, there is uniform methodology and ramification is reflecting more um, ontological distinctions. If you are studying uh, something which will be, uh, I, will, I will simplify it a little bit uh, uh, at the level of, for instance, uh, bionome of human organism, then of course there will be some differences when you are talking about uh, functioning of all human organism and some differences in how you are dealing with, for instance, like collectives of, uh, of, of humans. But this is not so much about differences are coming in uh, fr uh, from what is studied. And of course, 
there is natural need for some form of uh, ramification split of uh, methodology. But basic methodology um, is, uh, at least in principle, uh, should be uniform. So this is how I understand these distinctions between lowest multi multidisciplinary inquiry, interdisciplinary inquiry, and transdisciplinary inquiry. I'm not sure, but like, uh, uh, is it uh, like more or less clear? Do you have any questions about this? I have a comment. Uh, no. When you are when you are in the logic of the transdisciplinarity, mm -hmm. like my observation is what like comes back very nicely is those disciplines are uh, like and re-entering the scene as kind of entities within the, the like uh, kind of like territory you are researching meaning that like uh, the the ontological ramifications that uh, that you mentioned here like to my mind are such that some entities on the like the field of research kind of talk back <laughs> mm. and like for example when you are researching bacteria it will kind of like it can, it can like walk but it cannot talk yes but you start you start researching humans or like bodies of like like epistemologies or like you know like mm. interactions the cultures and so on they basically like come back with their story yes and you can have the the kind of like unifying conceptual framework but still you have like your framework needs to allow like the the the, the mode of listening to the to the entities you are researching and in that sense this interdisciplinarity and multidisciplinarity kind of come back within the framework yes because they have their worldviews they have their epistemologies their interactions with the world and so on and so on so yeah. i think it's kind of like the, the mm -hmm. I, I would i would draw it as kind of concentric circles that like uh, this interdisciplinarity kind of like uh you know, like incorporate the, 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 the lower level. I, I'm not sure if this is understandable. What is I'm not, it, it, because it is very uh, broad topic. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I guess that we, we, we understand each other, except that for me, it's important this distinction that divisions and uh, at interdisciplinary level are, uh, uh, resulting from uh, differences, epistemological differences. Yes. Where at transdisciplinary level, it comes from uh, what, like ontological side. Yes. What is, of course, if you are dealing with part of something, then methodology will be changing, but it will not come from the assumption, okay, we are, uh, we are separating methods of, for instance, biology, uh, methods of physics or something like this. Mm -hmm. yes, this, yes, this yes, disappears. Yeah, yeah. Just, just what, what I was adding, kind of like a, like maybe like a footnote. Yes, that those mm -hmm. ontological dis uh, distinctions. Yes, on mm -hmm. the level, like if you are researching uh, human reality, they like mm -hmm. they are also like epistemological, not on your side, but on the side of the, the entities you are researching, yes? because those like, for example, human societies, let's say cultures, whatever you will be researching, they are also ways of viewing. Yes. So, uh, yeah, but but it's, it's probably mm -hmm. kind of yeah, uh, when because you, you gave good uh, example here is that uh, what I uh, think at transdisciplinary level, uh, we are starting from using some kind of framework which will be common for bacteria, uh, our uh, bionomes, uh, uh, cells, uh, and so on, going up to human organism and then even going further, so that there is some part, methodological part, which is common. Yeah, yeah. But distinctions are coming when there is need to adapt to like specifics of uh, of objects of study mm -hmm. yeah. okay so here is like uh, 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 like this distinction and uh, what I thought uh, like in all my attempts to develop uh, educational methods I tried to think about need for going towards trans transdisciplinarity. Now, this is like, I don't claim that there is uh, any already existing uh, 
framework for transdisciplinary studies, which would be uh, already working. Yeah, so this is like more uh, idea, but I don't believe that this can be achieved this way that first we have trans transdisciplinary study and only then we have uh, we think about uh, education if we don't have people uh, like researchers who are already uh, engaged in uh, creation of these trans transdisciplinary studies inquiries there's no chance uh, that um, that someone ca can um, engage students in uh, uh, the process in which they are uh, supposed to look in this uh, overarching uh, approach. Yeah, and this is what I already was talking before. Uh, uh, it was the issue which I think uh, in all history of education, the, uh, I, I mean Western, uh, I don't like actually Western, I, I prefer Greek <laughs> or European uh, tradition. Uh, Europe, of course, American tradition is different, but it belongs to basically the same uh, direction. Uh, and this is not uh, any kind of evaluation, it's just a statement of the fact. Uh, and there was uh, this uh, tradition of epistemic uh, unity going very, very far back. Uh, in this slide, I'm, I'm uh, uh, talking about liberal arts curriculum starting uh, 1500 years ago, uh, I, I mentioned here uh, Marcianus Capella or Baetis, but actually we can go back. Uh, it is only that from this time we have something which continued as um, clearly defined tradition of, of uh, liberal arts. Uh, before, for instance, concepts of education from Cicero uh, were in some ways consistent with, with it, but not in uh, all other ways. But anyway, in all this long tradition, uh, there was always uh, the focus on providing students with diverse uh, education, education from different uh, uh, um, uh, forms of, of uh, uh, studies, uh, but uh, there was no consistent way to uh, implement uh, something like uh, uh, education for uh, performing this uh, integration. So, of course, uh, it is uh, quite clear that the ideal of someone who can uh, understand uh, issues related to uh, many different aspects of human life, for instance, that something like this was an ideal, but there was basically the only approach which was used was, okay, we have to require the students are learning this and this and this, but there was uh, basically uh, no attempt to provide uh, pedagogical methodology, how this can be achieved, how we can help students to develop skills in uh, integration. When I say it was never, uh, there was one exception, and this uh, uh, was this uh, Harvard Red Book, of 1944, or for, I never remember, 44 or 45. This is this famous document, which was uh, prepared uh, by uh, the committee in Har of uh, Harvard uh, faculty, uh, where basically this was a reaction to atrocities of Second World War. Uh, and uh, there was a clear idea that uh, what is necessary is 
uh, bridging differences between mainly between uh, hard science, mathematics, engineering, and humanities. Uh, this later, exactly the same ideas were made famous by P.C. Snow, uh, who wrote first article, then book uh, about two cultures. And right now it is like a, a meme. When you say two cultures, everybody knows it was Snow's idea. Actually, it was long before Snow, 10 years, no, 13 years before Snow. The same issues were uh, discussed by uh, uh, Harvard faculty, and uh, they developed some ideas uh, which uh, were very good, but for some reason, I never found any real uh, implementation of these ideas. Uh, the only exception is uh, in a course which was developed by, by very young uh, Thomas Kuhn, uh, who uh, is this book. Well, this is a very good uh, uh, book, and the only book which I think uh, book written by Kuhn, which is worth reading. Uh, the Copernican uh, uh, Co the Copernican Revolution, planetary astronomy in the development of Western thought. Uh, this is very far from actually uh, the transdisciplinarity, but. Uh, there is in this book reflection of the idea that uh, we can uh, and we should uh, uh, give students some experience in uh, talking about issues which are related to disciplines like science disciplines and humanities uh, and uh, this Harvard uh, uh, Red Book uh, promoted the idea that there should be course, only one course, which would be for uh, students of humanities, which would give, uh, which would engage them into some form of discussion, humanities and sciences, and one course for science students. Uh, which would uh, engage them in uh, some discussion of, of uh, uh, humanistic issues. Uh, and this book was, uh, Thomas Kuhn just uh, got his PhD in physics and uh, Conant, who was president uh, of, of uh, Harvard University, asked him to teach this kind of course. So this book was a result of this. This book is not perfect. There are many things, and it is very far from actually engaging. I don't think that uh, this kind of course was uh, well enough structured and uh, conceptualized to uh, engage uh, students of humanities. But at least there was some kind of effort. And what was important, uh, this red book was already at the time where general education distribution in American universities was already popular. So it was recognition that division, uh, like enforced division or uh, uh, general education uh, distribution is not working, is not enough. So the only, this was the only exception, but uh, soon after um, uh, Sputnik uh, shock in America, uh, all ideas of, of this type were uh, basically forgotten because the main uh, goal was to succeed in competition with Soviet Union. So specialization started to be again uh, crucial. Martin, so, Martin, just to make sure, we are still seeing the slide number five, the, the point four, tradition of epistemic unity and education. It's correct, yeah. yes? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I have to make sure to, you know, because <laughs> to, uh, to, uh, <laughs> Okay, because you like you you were speaking yeah. about like year like years later, so I I was I just just wanted to make sure that. Okay, okay but good that you told me because <laughs> now I can see that. Right. I is passing fast. So <laughs> uh, uh, 
summarizing what, what I was saying, there was long tradition uh, of uh, promoted at least uh, formally um, epistemic unity in education. Uh, there was this, for instance, misunderstood and very often misinterpreted uh, division into trivium and quad quadrivium. Quadrivium was basically mathematics. And it's uh, actually, it started from mathematics. This was the idea, Pythagorean division of mathematics was into uh, arithmetic, music, geometry, astronomy, where music was not about music, but about harmony. So basically it was uh, dealing with numbers. Astronomy was not about astronomy, but about uh, change in motion. So, uh, but, so, but here there was clear concept of division that we are, we are uh, making division because we are dealing with something which is absolute, here is arithmetics, relative, here is music as harmony, stable, we have geometry, moving, changing, we have astronomy. And so there was this concept of uh, approach where students would be prepared uh, to be autonomous in uh, the inquiry. And uh, this unity, uh, epistemic unity was not the goal. You know, this uh, 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 basically uh, uh, the goal of liberal arts education was intellectual autonomy. Uh, because uh, uh, this so-called graduates now in using modern terminology were supposed to be either citizens or uh, very often clergy uh, who were uh, supposed to make uh, informed decisions. And without this epistemic unity, we, there is no possibility that uh, one person could understand uh, all uh, perspectives on uh, the topics where they have to uh, make uh, decisions. Uh, this uh, uh, intellectual autonomy was basically what defines liberal arts education. The, uh, again, I will not go because it will be too much time for this. Uh, very often, uh, liberal arts education was uh, misinterpreted uh, or actually name was abused. For instance, in 1920s, when in America, uh, research universities started to, uh, uh, to be formed, uh, those uh, like uh, uh, colleges which had a uh, higher uh, uh, view of themselves, they could not, they didn't have faculty doing research. So they were saying, oh, we are liberal arts education university, which of course didn't have anything to do with liberal uh, arts. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, but when we are, when we have this kind of approach in liberal arts, where on one hand, uh, it is um, clearly stated that this education is preparing uh, people who in the future will be making decisions, uh, but uh, which is not uh, giving some kind of occupational uh, or uh, uh, professional experience in like medieval universities, uh, uh, students who wanted to be, for instance, uh, uh, working, uh, who wanted to work in uh, uh, medical uh, medical uh, discipline, or who wanted to be uh, uh, working in uh, law canon or civil law and so on, they were going to different to next step to what now we are calling graduate uh, studies. So liberal arts was this common uh, part, but it was not preparing, it was not giving any, um, any uh, specific occupation. So 
it was associated very often with uh, like elitist approach. Uh, and uh, liberal arts increasingly was criticized as, uh, as education for people who do not need uh, preparation for work. And because of this, there, was, uh, there were attempts to hip, uh, hybridize uh, liberal arts with something else. And uh, sometimes it was just saturation of description of, of their programs with adjectives like applied or, or experiential <coughs> or vocational. But uh, sometimes there were some attempts and <coughs> in contemporary examples are problem-based learning, PBL, collaborative learning, CL, and a variety of hands-on learning experience approaches. I don't say that this kind of approach is, uh, is uh, wrong, negative, this hy uh, hybrids, uh, but there is some, always some danger uh, in this case with uh, the, this danger is of compromising uh, intellectual autonomy. So uh, I could, uh, in some sense, I could, um, I have like my own experience from the side uh, of uh, uh, laboratory mouse. Uh, when I was a kid, I, in early 1960s, 60s, uh, I was in uh, um, school, millennial school. Uh, there were some schools which were like selected. Uh, I, I, I have to say I, I'm from Poland and it was communistic country. And uh, uh, there were some kind of experiments how to improve education. And uh, this at this time, there was attempt to uh, to make learning more collective. So we were uh, divided into uh, groups. My, my class had about 40 students and we had seven uh, groups and we were supposed to learn together in these groups. And uh, after a couple of years of this experiment, the experiment was uh, totally abolished and it, it, it showed that there's uh, it is. It was disaster. Uh, I was lucky to be this mouse, uh, which uh, was assigned the role of head of the group. Basically, for kids who were heads of the groups, it was perfect. I, I, I'm aware that a lot of uh, of my uh, later professional and personal experience was shaped in very good uh, way, but it was by the cost of these kids who were just sitting and I, in my group, I was just saying, oh, we are doing this. And I was actually doing most of, of, of things and other kids that were playing, uh, doing something and they were not involved in any kind of education. Mm -hmm. So here is that uh, the best intentions in this hybridizing liberal arts education uh, uh, could be backfire. And I, uh, I know from literature, for instance, ideas of Dewey, uh, who wanted to make uh, American education more uh, pragmatic, was equally bad. The natural thing is we are, uh, like we humans, are uh, adapted to collective, to uh, like division of labor. When we have division of labor, it's uh, uh, at this point, we stop uh, uh, this integration. There is no point of repetition. Division of labor is very effective for achieving some particular goals, but it automatically is uh, excluding possibility that orientation will be through integration. There's no point of integration. We are working together. So I don't have to worry what uh, Johnny is doing or what Mary is doing. Uh, everybody has own uh, task, uh, uh, tasks to do. And of course, it is crushing uh, autonomy. 
So, uh, sorry, he is. Uh, in discussion of this uh, of these issues, very often it comes some kind of comparison with uh, more general uh, issue of relationship between theory and praxis in the human inquiries. In uh, like uh, in April, there was like short interaction. I don't remember name of of the guy who was talking about uh, that. Uh, in uh, transdisciplinary inquiries, we have to uh, exclude uh, issues of studying some problems, mm -hmm. no, it was which I objected. Yeah. You know? no. And uh, so here, I think that this, uh, this is actually uh, not a good idea because there are many different practical reasons yeah, a lot of education is subsidized by, by society. And if we don't provide society with solutions to uh, its problems, why society should give tax money for education? Uh, so this is like practical side, but the other side is that I don't think that uh, there is actually any real conflict between <clears throat> a theory and praxis. Uh, the uh, issue is more uh, like sociological. Of course, in uh, interactions of people, uh, there will be uh, some negative uh, uh, situations uh, where there will be abuse of, for instance, resources and so on. And it could be uh, justified by for instance, some people are saying, oh, 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 those mathematicians are talking about something. Nobody knows what all this is about. We should put money not in mathematics, but in, for instance, uh, study of, I don't know, better uh, type of corn or something like this, which of course is uh, nonsense. Yeah, the, uh, uh, science is an organism and this is like, uh, uh, I'm clear that this is uh, this would lead to uh, if we look only from practical point of view, it will it would kill uh, science or you know, all inquiries. And um, uh, in here you can see in my slide that uh, I fully subscribe to the frequently quoted view of Kurt Le uh, Levy. Uh, Kurt Levin is the last person who could be uh, suspected of theoretical bias. He, he started this uh, action research approach. He was uh, basically uh, one of most important psychologists uh, in uh, the study of very practical uh, aspects of human and society life. But uh, what uh, he clearly was stating, uh, which is very often uh, uh, quoted, is there is nothing so practical as a good theory. Uh, any kind of division, uh, uh, theory and, and, uh, and praxis, is, uh, in, in, in my view, it is purely a political or economic uh, phenomenon, and this has nothing to do with actual science. Uh, in case, for instance, very good examples are of uh, uh, mathematicians, uh, some of them like Polish math famous mathematicians like Steinhaus, who worked in very abstract theoretical uh, things, but they made uh, a lot of contributions to very practical uh, methods. So uh, the same I would say about uh, about um, uh, education. Yeah, all these uh, attacks on liberal arts that it is uh, that we cannot say that uh, the goal of education is knowledge because there are too many practical uh, problems to be solved. This, of course, is not uh, not justified. This is nonsense. 
know, there is no way to develop everything from practical point of view or everything from theoretical point of view. It has to be coordinated. And this, uh, again, requires some form of integration. Uh, and here, uh, I, I already showed before in April, but I'm coming back to uh, international liberal arts education at AIU. This is something which I uh, developed, and this was for quite a long time. It was uh, uh, it was used uh, <clears throat> as some kind of framework for curriculum uh, development. And uh, these goals were first goal is proficiency in foreign language communication. <laughs> This is not my, uh, uh, like, uh, this was uh, um, uh, Dr. Nakajima's uh, point uh, where he was very interested and he believed that knowledge of several foreign languages uh, uh, is uh, uh, very important for anybody who, uh, who, uh, who wants to contribute to society or to humanity. Uh, where I will, I'm not so much uh, convinced that uh, I, I believe that it's necessary to to know at least at least one of uh, international languages. And basically, I cannot imagine working in, for instance, in science without knowledge of English. But um, whether this uh, should be like main point of a main uh, item on the list of educational goals. This is something I, I'm not against it, but I don't think. For me, the most important are uh, second point and third. Integration of knowledge from the broad foundation of multiple disciplines. <coughs> and <coughs> following it, intellectual autonomy and the ability to make decisions. Uh, there, uh, there is uh, the fourth uh, item, actually, I, I, I promoted this was recognition of own cultural identity and understanding of other cultures. I, I don't want to talk about uh, this, but um, there are some reasons, even from the point of view of transdisciplinarity, it is uh, uh, it is important part because uh, not so much about uh, necessarily learning about other cultures, but learning about own uh, cultural identity through uh, learning of other cultures. So this is something where uh, I believe that this is part of preparation for this transdisciplinarity. The last understanding uh, globalization, uh, this is more uh, problematic because uh, what is uh, like uh, here, if we don't say what we mean by globalization, it is just buzzword and dangerous buzzword. Yeah, we have, uh, if we look at glo globalization from formal economic point of view, uh, uh, economic and political point of view, there is no globalization, it's purely localization. In Europe, now there are twice more countries than uh, they were before so-called globalization started. Uh, the issue when globalization started. So here is, I don't say that this is uh, like bad idea, but um, I, I, uh, I think that this uh, requires like uh, deeper uh, discussion of how to understand it, then it makes sense. The bigger problem which I have is uh, methods of inquiry, which give this second dimension, where again, here we have some form of uh, uh, dividing. Yeah, so I try to uh, find some way, but the big problem is this framework was supposed to be for everyone, for students, for faculty, for development of courses and so on. So uh, going too far into philosophy is, um, would be uh, like uh, impossible. But uh, I'm talking about and uh, showing this because uh, I would like to point it where are these issues which typically are totally ignored, but which are important. 
For instance, division between social science perspective and humanist humanistic perspective. Uh, this is uh, typically it is purely formal. For, uh, for instance, in every American university, psychology is a social science uh, uh, discipline. I never uh, could agree, of course, uh, social psychology, yeah, but uh, in this case, when we are saying, okay, so you divide social psychology, psychology, for me, psychology, it is uh, uh, like purely humanistic study. Uh, of course, it depends how we are studying uh, humans. If we study about humans in the perspective of their interaction with their social environment, of course, it, uh, it, it could be shifted to social science. But the question is, okay, uh, do we get any insight into uh, curriculum or curricular issues by creating these kind of divisions? For instance, division empirical methods and quantitative uh, reasoning. There is no division. There will be no empirical methods without quantitative uh, reasoning and quantitative reasoning would be meaningless without empirical methods. Uh, and then critical thinking, again, uh, as, a, uh, as a method of inquiry uh, is problematic because what is critical thinking? It is basically something which is um, uh, related to intellectual autonomy. So uh, this, even if I am very proud of of this uh, framework, <clears throat> that this is something which uh, I, I think was relatively good and it helped uh, AIU to achieve uh, uh, like what what was possible uh, at this time. I still I am not uh, convinced that this is the way where we should go. Martin, just, just to like be super clear, you are now very mm -hmm. nicely criticizing your own design, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is just, you know, like I had to formulate it yes, in yes, the yes. way that it would be understood. Yes, yes, yes. Because I understand it was 2008. So like if I took anything from 2008 uh, uh, from my thing, I, I will be doing the same. I will be telling you like, oh, okay, like this is, this was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> This yeah. is how it goes, yes? We've like, yeah, yeah. luckily, so, so it, it was like, uh, it helped, it was practical, but this is not that I would say, okay, this gives direction for approach to study of curriculum. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these are purely formal divisions and uh, a lot of this was, did not give any, kind of sense of what is really important. And uh, of course, from uh, the point of view of promotion of transdisciplinarity, this second part is uh, most important. I will f uh, draw. Okay, so here we have mm -hmm this most important uh, part. And of course, uh, uh, this is related to uh, this third, uh, this third uh, item. And uh, because uh, there was need to go further to develop something new, uh, I thought about what we, what, uh, how we can uh, resume to uh, our role as leader, leaders of uh, Japanese higher education was to go farther into this direction of integration of knowledge from broad foundation of multiple disciplines. <clears throat> Except that when we say broad foundation of multiple disciplines, we already assume division into disciplines. So it required a different way of thinking. 
Okay, now I try to go to next. So you are probably. trying to move slides by drawing. Yeah, yeah, but I think I have to stop drawing. Oh. <laughs> and then I can maybe. No. Or you can draw the next slide. I, 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 I'm using for teaching, I'm, you know, I was using last couple of years, uh, Google Classroom, not Zoom. So uh, yeah. I. Uh, how did you how did you start drawing in the first place? Well, I clicked here, but I don't see here that there is unclicking. Oh. Wow. Maybe. Maybe if you click on, on the little hand and then uh, a little above, above and or, or the arrow and then the pen is gone and then you can. Oh, yeah, the, the hand here next. Yeah, but to the still hand. I cannot. I cannot move now. It's uh, it, it doesn't uh, draw, but it doesn't mean that I can move the slide. And share and share again. The what? Maybe unsure and share again tends to be a ah, unsure, maybe. Yeah. Solution for everything. Oh. Controls. Okay, close annotation. No, it doesn't help. Pause share. Doesn't make. Maybe I will try to. No. Maybe I will use new share. Oh. Okay, new share <laughs> helped. So, uh, because of limitations of uh, time, I will, I will skip here, like how uh, this goals could be uh, achieved. And uh, here is this second at attempt. Yeah, so after Dr. Nakajima passed away, uh, as I said, for a while I was uh, out of this, and then I was asked to to go ahead and then i uh, i was uh, um, i formed a group like a committee of several faculty members and we were uh, working on this new major fusion of science technology and humanities and um, uh, one of these uh, motivations uh, was that uh, if we want to think about future oriented education, it should be education uh, where we are not in competition with uh, information technology. <clears throat> that uh, when we want to do this, then uh, we have to think uh, that, uh, that this uh, uh, direction should be uh, based on uh, need for sharing meaning. Now that this sharing meaning is something which is uh, very human and uh, which uh, definitely I don't I cannot uh, say it will be impossible to implement in uh, computers, but uh, this is where computers are the least Com, uh, in competition with humans. <coughs> so, uh, and uh, when we are dealing with this, we have that what, if you want to have this kind of education, we have to uh, develop capacity to synth synthesize information into knowledge. And uh, here again, there was this issue that uh, we have to replace 
general education or liberal arts uh, distribution by uh, uh, methodology or promoting methods uh, um, uh, which can give us ability to integrate or synthesize knowledge. Yeah, so we are, we are actually speaking a lot about magic and you are rightly pointing out here that this like the whole pedagogy of those di dif differentiated courses is based oh. on magic, basically, that you, you assume yeah. that this magical integration will happen somehow, you know, you will like bring yeah. a lot of inputs and, you know, and there is yeah. <laughs> integrated <laughs> knowing subject. <laughs> so. I will, I'll come back to this, but one of uh, where I'll be listing uh, uh, like obstacles in uh, implementation. It was basically that uh, faculty with whom I was working were saying, we are not ready for this. <laughs> we, we ourselves don't know how to uh, integrate knowledge. We are working on our own uh, issues and we barely can understand, even within, within the same discipline, we can barely understand people who are uh, not uh, very close. Yeah? So, so here is that the, we should think about how we can achieve it. And then uh, precedents, uh, a lot of this, what, what uh, I uh, was doing here is that uh, I uh, wanted to uh, use uh, experience of STEM. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And STEM was uh, initiated by, uh, by graduate schools for design, where uh, uh, it started from University of Connecticut uh, and later was, uh, was uh, like a key uh, direction of development of Royal College of Arts in London, which is number one graduate program in design in the world. Uh, and here was, uh, there was this uh, clear recognition uh, of need for merging uh, humanities with technology and with science. Uh, whether uh, it was done in a reasonable way or not, this is matter of the discussion. For instance, I mentioned here this Jonathan Johnny Ibe, chief of uh, chief design officer in Apple, uh, who was named the Chancellor of Royal College of Art in London. Uh, I read an interview with him, and he was saying, "Okay, I my uh, when." I will uh, promote uh, this uh, uh, program. <coughs> My first example is that students should be able to design a soap dispenser. Because over there, there's everything involved, uh, science, technology, <coughs> uh, art, and everything. This is a little bit naive. Uh, I, I, I guess that he got quite big money for being chancellor of RCA <coughs> and to uh, uh, provide this example of so dis dispenser as, uh, as some kind of representation of this uh, STEAM program was not very impressive. <coughs> There is a movement in Japan, which is Kansei engineering, which is also uh, uh, like tendency in engineering to promote uh, engineering, which is based on recognition of human needs. So there were some kind of ideas, uh, STEAM and this Kansei, uh, which uh, some ideas were interesting. Uh, but what was uh, for me was important that I could show uh, that uh, uh, this is not something which like my own dream. People uh, are thinking about this. There was no no program of this type, and as far as I know, there is still no 
fully develop a program of this type at undergraduate level. Uh, and uh, so uh, I work with faculty, actually I develop all this framework and I engage uh, faculty like volunteering faculty who would be interested in participation in implementation of, uh, of, of uh, the program. So uh, this uh, major uh, had prerequisites uh, and then uh, courses which were, were in this original project, which uh, ultimately was was uh, suspended. Uh, the courses was first was symmetry, addressing the question, what is not changing when everything is changing? I will talk a little bit about symmetry later, so maybe it will be more clear. Then course two, beauty and truth, dimensions of reality uh, are, oh, sorry, beauty and truth is a question is what is the relation between truth and beauty? Uh, dimensions of reality, what is the role of space and time in our comprehension and exploration of reality? Unity in diversity, this is like EU uh, motto, uh, addressing the question, what is the relation between diversity, relativity, and homogeneity, universality? Uh, course five, trans transcending limitations, addressing the question, what are our humanity limits and how to overcome them? And course six, technology as a link between the natural and the artificial addressing the questions. Can we en engineer reality? Is the distinction between natural and artificial losing, uh, losing is, is meaning? Is there any danger of the lost identity of humanity and its enslavement? So this was, uh, this was uh, uh, the list of the six courses. Then uh, here are uh, like course one, symmetry. And the list here is these topics which are, were, are here were actually proposed by uh, by faculty. Yeah, I, uh, my idea was that uh, in this course, if we have six courses, we could have, for instance, six faculty, uh, and each of uh, of, of uh, the members of of, uh, of this group would. Uh, teach um, like block of two or three weeks uh, in the course. And then uh, this course would be team taught. So uh, what we have here is uh, that these particular topics uh, listed here are topics where uh, faculty who were engaged, they were working on their own contribution to this. But the same faculty would be involved in, for instance, uh, course Beauty and Truth. And again, <clears throat> they were working on uh, like what, how they could see they could contribute to this, uh, to, to this course, so that uh, they, they, uh, I, I explained that the main idea is to, uh, to build some kind of common framework so uh, what they have to do is they have to think how to uh, find corresponding points for all these uh, disciplines involved. Nice. Were those your ideas, the, the, the courses, uh, the choice? Uh, the, co uh, these uh, six courses were <laughs> my ideas, but these points here, uh, like symmetry in visual arts, mathematics of symmetry, concept of symmetry in physics, Symmetry and symmetry breaking in biology. These were items which faculty working with me. Yes, yes, yes. So you gave the, the scopes and they were kind of like bringing. Yeah, them. and they were feeling this and we were discussing how we can put together. Uh, the more we were working, the more uh, uh, overwhelmed were faculty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> but I told them that this will not, we, we cannot start suddenly teaching this. It would take several years that we have to start. So uh, we agreed that it will be done this way uh, because objection was if there is no one person who is instructor uh, on, the rec uh, on the books uh, responsible for the course. So it is nobody's course, so it will fall apart. 
So it's okay, we can divide it, for instance. I, because I, I, my, one of my specialities is symmetry. So I will be responsible for symmetry and I'll be inv uh, inviting other faculty to the course for which I am responsible. Then, uh, for instance, the second beauty and truth, uh, there was uh, Professor Kuniko Abe and she would be responsible for this and she would be inviting uh, uh, faculty from this group to uh, uh, have uh, like their contributions to uh, to the course. Actually, uh, uh, this was the only uh, co uh, course which was actually implemented. Mm. Uh, Professor Kuniko Abe, uh, the title of the course was Art and Science. But there was at least one course was actually, it was already after uh, after project was suspended, but of course she could, uh, she could develop a, a course independently from, uh, from this major. So uh, uh, this was here, uh, this uh, shows basically what were these uh, contributions from, from uh, other faculty. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, here are these uh, problems and like what, why it was not easy and why basically uh, this <coughs> uh, work on this, uh, on this project was uh, uh, suspended. Was it again, the same objection as before uh, when I was talking about liberal arts education. Uh, there is still uh, this kind of uh, conviction that parents are sending kids to get job. What kind of job someone will have after uh, completing this kind of major? The, uh, uh, this objection I, uh, I, I, I repeated by saying, okay, when AIU in 2012, it was like peak of, uh, of, of the university. Uh, there was um, like at this time big noise because about 100 CEOs of uh, uh, biggest companies in Japan were asked about evaluation of graduates from the different universities. Uh, AIU received 35 votes. The next was Tokyo University, which is number one university, huge university in, uh, in uh, the Tokyo, which is number one in, in Japan, received only 12 votes. So I was saying <clears throat> uh, when uh, these CEOs were asked why they highly evaluated uh, AIU graduates uh, working in their companies, they were saying that because they had very good uh, overall preparation. Uh, the uh, uh, issue here is in Japan, there is very long tradition that you study biology and then you are uh, working in the business like uh, advertising business or something like this. There's no connection between your major and your job. So objection here is, okay, what kind of job the only thing is that in the past students were okay, they were graduating, uh, graduating biology and business or something like this. And there was clear they have major in biology. I can see that uh, there could be a problem that more conservative uh, employers would say, what fusion of uh, science, uh, technology and, and humanity, what does it mean? But I told them students will have lots of time to prepare for this answer to, uh, to this question. So I, I was not so much concerned that this would be uh, something uh, bad. The only thing is when Dr. Nakajima was, uh, was alive, he was going to TV and he was presenting it with full uh, 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 like, uh, confidence that this is the way it should be. And this was what was missing, that if you don't have someone who is politician, president of university uh, in Japan as well in, in America is a politician. 
if you don't have politician who will go to TV, to media and will say something, then there's no chance for success. So here it's quite clear that uh, uh, I don't think that there will be problem with the promoting uh, this major. Uh, if there was someone who would uh, have this power of persuasion that this is something which has value. Internal uh, uh, obstacles, I, I said that uh, uh, concern uh, from instructors uh, was that they were saying we are not ready for this. Uh, so here is that uh, I, I, I was telling uh, uh, them, okay, we already went through two years of discussion and so on. You already know this idea. Now, of course, it will take time before we can make it working uh, smoothly, but it, it is still possible uh, to do. And here you can see that this is this point where, uh, where uh, it is so important that without first having some form of education, maybe not the major, maybe only some courses on transdisciplinarity, we'll never have people who can implement this kind of project. And so here is that we have to start from something and then after some time we'll have graduates, for instance, from this kind of major, can uh, some of them can go and can become uh, faculty at the universities, and then they can promote transdisciplinarity uh, without uh, this kind of uh, uh, feeling of intimidation by by something which is new, which is uh, uh, like unknown. Uh, then. Uh, well, I should finish soon. Um, my experience in science in English in high school. So in 2003, I taught this uh, basically two courses, although it was one course called science in English with two topics. One was symmetry. One was links between cosmic scale phenomena and life on earth. Uh, this second one was basically uh, I uh, uh, was uh, um, uh, discussing with students issues related, for instance, to solar activity, which is periodic. There is period about 11.2 years of increasing and decreasing uh, solar activity. It has many consequences uh, for uh, like biological life, but also for social events. I found uh, like old uh, textbook, uh, high school textbook in history, <coughs> Japanese high, high, high uh, school textbook, where there was a very nice graph of uh, uh, some uh, peasant revolts in Japan in uh, 18th, 19th century. And this graph was perfectly uh, related to solar activity. This was already known that this kind of there was there is some kind of connection between solar activity and some political events, but political events which were uh, based on spontaneous action, not for instance wars. War, wars were not related to uh, solar activity because decisions about going to the war were, were not uh, a result of uh, some kind of psycho biological uh, aspects. So this was like uh, one of these points and the students, I, I uh, showed them uh, uh, like uh, this uh, dark spots on the sun using a telescope. Uh, and uh, uh, I brought uh, slices of trees. I went to the forest where they were uh, doing logging, uh, I, I collected slices of woods and they could find out uh, uh, like uh, about when this, how old were these trees by, uh, and when uh, they started to grow by looking at 
uh, this ring. So there were, uh, it was uh, like one type of uh, fun. <clears throat> Uh, the other is about uh, symmetry. Again, you can see that there was chorus in the major uh, chorus, which uh, was about symmetry and here. And uh, I published recently a paper, uh, multidisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity, and transdisciplinarity, the Tower of Babel uh, in the Age of uh, Cultures. And this is like quite, uh, long uh, philosophical paper on basically on the issue uh, of transdisciplinarity. And uh, in this paper, I provide argumentation that the concept of symmetry uh, and study of symmetry is like a perfect, uh, uh, maybe not perfect, but good working uh, way to promote this uh, transdisciplinarity. And uh, because I don't know how you know, like, or when I say symmetry, how much uh, you are familiar with this. So uh, last part is uh, what is uh, symmetry? Um, and this will explain why I think it is important. So uh, everything started from uh, what now we call mirror symmetry. So uh, in going all the way back to Vitruvius, but through uh, Alberti, through many other uh, 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 works of many other uh, philosophers of art, uh, we know that uh, everybody could say, oh, this is symmetric, this is not symmetric. But there was the issue how we can conceptualize what does it mean uh, symmetric? And it turned out that <clears throat> uh, only in 19th century, the answer uh, uh, was given. And he is like, so this is Leonardo's uh, uh, illustration for Vitruvius and this canon of human body. And uh, everybody says, okay, this shows symmetry. But the description was, okay, symmetry, it is harmony uh, which is expressed by uh, co um, uh, pro uh, proportion of length of parts of, uh, uh, of, in this case, of body. But if this was true, then the issue is, uh, if we had this canon with two left hands, nobody would say that we have symmetry. So it's not about size. If we have two uh, left hands, they are exactly the same. So we have perfect yeah, correspondence. So here is, there was still this missing part. And uh, this came in uh, 19th century where it was recognized that what now we call mirror symmetry is when we consider transformation of all plane, and then uh, in this trans after this transformation, we get that given uh, object like here, this human uh, picture of human uh, body uh, becomes exactly the same after uh, mirror reflection. Then we, we say that this object uh, has this uh, symmetry. So this was beginning and then uh, uh, we have that uh, there was always fascination with symmetry. So we have square, square. In this case, we have that we can have symmetry uh, axes, which are here, these red ones, like vertical, diagonal, and horizontal. Triangle has different, yeah? this uh, circle different. So there was always fascination of, but nobody could formulate what it is. So. He is, uh, and what is even worse, uh, many famous uh, thinkers, philosophers uh, failed in their attempts. So the most uh, like extreme cases of Kant. Kant was uh, trying to use uh, uh, symmetry 
for uh, his argumentation would support existence of absolute space. <clears throat> so he was supporting, Kant was supporting Newton's uh, view of absolute uh, space. And <clears throat> so even the greatest thinkers could not uh, uh, conceptualize what it is, even if everybody could easily detect what is semantic, what is not semantic. So here is a part of mystery. And in general, in development of any curriculum, like one of my main principles is not to kill interest in students by telling them, oh, everybody, uh, everything is already known. You know, scientists know this. Scientists, scientists usually don't know much. No, no, very little part of uh, of the picture, and uh, uh, more important is to show that there are great things which we can achieve uh, in inquiry, but what we know is only very little part of great mystery of reality, and here symmetry has several of these mysteries. For instance, uh, 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 when we consider the symmetry, we have this left and right hand objects. This is so-called chirality. And then uh, uh, Pasteur recognized that uh, there are two types of molecules, uh, left-handed and right-handed in organic uh, compounds. And he realized that, uh, that um, uh, organic compounds which are synthesized have equal number of left-handed and right-handed molecules. But uh, when these compounds are produced by a biological organism, in many cases, there's preference means there are uh, typically only one, only left-handed molecule or only right-handed molecules. So for instance, proteins have some specific handedness and nobody knows why. Even now after so many things, there are of course some hypotheses, but we don't know. Now, what, what, what caused that living organisms uh, it is uh, like one of these uh, things which could be like interesting for students is to speculate because uh, it looks like that if you travel to some other world far away and if you land in the land which is exactly the same has life exactly the same as on earth except that molecules produced by organisms over there are, uh, have uh, different handedness, then you will die of starvation because we cannot digest molecules which are uh, which are uh, which have this different handedness. <coughs> of course, if we have both, if we have, for instance, if if you have margarine which is artificially produced. You have both left and right-handed uh, molecules, but at least some of them are of proper handedness. So later you can have uh, problems with your stomach because you'll have a lot of garbage in your, in your stomach, which is useless, but at least you have, but if you have exactly opposite, then there will be problem that you will be not able to uh, survive even if everything looks exactly the same as on Earth. So this kind of things could be like uh, topics for discussion uh, with uh, students. Now, uh, when uh, after this uh, association of symmetries with transformation, uh, the most important was Erlangen prog uh, program of Felix Klein, 1872. Uh, which originally was uh, uh, that he considered geometry is a study of invariance, uh, invariance of 
uh, geometric uh, of isometric uh, transformations, means rotations, translations, and so on, transformations which do not change distance of, uh, of uh, points. And Klein actually uh, used this for uh, unification of different types of geometry like a fine geometry, projective geometry, and so on. So here was this integrative part. And this integrative part uh, was uh, uh, later uh, used in physics, in chemistry, and other disciplines. A little bit more about this. For instance, when we have equilateral triangle, then uh, we have these transformations will be uh, so on this uh, slide, we have counterclockwise rotational symmetries of this. So we have going uh, one, two, three. So this is original one, two, three here, one, one, two, three here. And then we have mirror reflections, which are here, reflections with respect to this uh, vertical axis. Uh, this axis and this axis. And then we get that in this case, rows are, uh, are uh, uh, in this case, are uh, <coughs> uh, reflections, musa rotations. And here's how we combine these <coughs> transformations. So uh, the group of these transformations which are preserving uh, triangle. Remember, all plane is transformed. So here, all plane is rotated. But what is happening here, the, if it is uh, equilateral uh, triangle, it will, after rotation by 120 degrees, it will come back to itself. <coughs> Where square will come back after 90 degrees or multiplicity of 90 degrees, but not after 120 degrees. So these groups of, uh, of uh, transformations uh, as like uh, algebraic structures of, of, of composition of uh, transformations characterize symmetry. And we can have many different symmetries. So here's symmetry of, of the square. Yeah, here we had for D3, it is for equilateral triangle. <coughs> four square is D4. Yeah, we have very different uh, structure, group structure of transformations. So this was basically how it started in mathematics. <coughs> then we have Emma Netter, 1918. Uh, she uh, uh, proved uh, like really Copernican revolution theorem. She showed, <coughs> she showed that if we, uh, why we have conservation of energy, conservation of momentum and so on, is because we want to have description of a reality which is invariant with respect to change of observer. Means that we want to have objective description of reality. If we want to have uh, uh, the description which is uh, uh, invariant with respect to, for instance, time translation, we'll have energy conserved. If we want to have uh, um, uh, 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 invariant description when we switch from, uh, from uh, observer, one observer to observer uh, who is moving along the straight line, uh, we get different. Uh, we, in this case, we have momentum uh, uh, conservation. So all these conservation laws are actually results of the assumption that we want to have description of reality, which is invariant with respect to changes of observers. So this is basically like, uh, Copernican uh, revolution, but at much, much higher level because uh, it is something which uh, is impossible to, uh, to do without involvement of mathematics. And then after the, this, uh, there are two very famous theorems. So I was talking about first theorem, there's also second theorem. 
but basically um, uh, this was like high point and it started career of groups, uh, gr group theory and symmetry. And Philip uh, Warren Anderson in his article, more is different from 1972. Uh, there's his very fam famous uh, uh, statement it is only slightly overstating that uh, the case to say that physics is study of symmetry. So here is uh, another uh, reason why symmetry is good for promotion of transdisciplinarity. Uh, it is that uh, it is clearly fundamental concept for mathematics, for physics, for chemistry. Um, uh, he is like Pasteur, uh, so he is for chemistry, for biology. Uh, Curie principle was saying that only broken symmetry can produce broken uh, symmetry and so on. So basically all science is based on symmetry, but symmetry itself has origin in aesthetics. Yeah, so we have here this uh, connection. We have, uh, for instance, we have uh, a result of symmetry of molecules of water uh, are producing this uh, s uh, hexagonal slow, uh, snowflakes. Here it is uh, that uh, I, I, I use here a slide from different pre presentation that uh, <clears throat> as everybody knows, snowflakes have hexagonal symmetry and actually it's not true. There are uh, rare uh, snowflakes which have this uh, symmetry of like uh, D3 here, D3 here. Uh, <clears throat> there are snowflakes which are not symmetric. Only about 1% of snowflakes exhibit clearly hexagonal D6 uh, symmetry. So it means majority of uh, snowflakes are not symmetric. So there are many things which are uh, in, involved in study of symmetry, even such uh, simple, seemingly simple case of, of snowflake. For instance, the question which is, uh, which is still uh, uh, basically open is, okay, we have, uh, we, we have this hexagonal symmetry which can be explained by uh, symmetry of molecules of, of water, but why uh, the snowflakes are developing in a plane? Why this symmetry is not going in uh, third dimension? Yeah, so there are many uh, questions which are still could be uh, an R study. And finally, uh, Again, case geometric case of symmetry of, uh, of uh, uh, here we have rectangle, non-square rectangle. It turns out that it's symmetry described by group, which has this table on the right side. And uh, this group is called uh, Klein four group because Felix Klein, this guy from Erlangen program, was first interested in uh, in, the, in this group for like uh, uh, experimenting with uh, issues of symmetry. Then it turns out that uh, when we are dealing with logical operations in, in computer science in construction, uh, we have so-called XOR gate, <coughs> which is working also uh, with this group, which is Klein group. We have Klein group in the work of Claude uh, Levi Strauss, structural analysis in linguistics and anthropology. <clears throat> and he used a Klein group in the description of sociological conditions. We have Jean Piaget with his IN, INRC group, uh, which, he, uh, the, uh, which he was using for the study of <clears throat> Uh, stages of development, cognitive development of, of, of children. 
This ion, uh, ion RC group is also Klein group. Uh, uh, Philip Anderson in this uh, uh, famous article, More is Different, is writing that there is a curious avoidance of uh, simpler symmetry electric dipoles uh, when we have NH3 ammonia, uh, where uh, this ammonia is vibrating to, uh, to have symmetry, which is described by Klein group. And finally, the greatest mystery is one of the most important forms of symmetry in nature, so-called CPT symmetry, where we have transfer, uh, transformation of charge <coughs> uh, plus minus, like electron has a negative, uh, um, uh, proton has positive charge, but which is positive, which is negative, it is, we call it positive negative. But there is no, we have this kind of things that we have to be careful uh, what we assume, what is uh, just uh, uh, what is uh, convention and what is here. What is uh, important here is that there is no way we could say electron for sure has negative uh, charge. It is only our assumption. And then when we are looking at this, we can see that uh, this uh, uh, symmetry with respect to change of, of uh, charge, uh, basically this is uh, like transition from matter to antimatter. So uh, here is that basically we have uh, symmetry, but this symmetry, which is uh, uh, C symmetry, uh, can, if it is only itself, it can be via, violated. We uh, consider the transformation of parity, it is left handedness and right handedness, uh, and transformation of the direction of time. So, what we have that the most general group of symmetry for reality from physical point of view is combination of these three CPT. And this group, CPT group, is Klein group. So uh, this is, you can see here that we have exactly the same one small group, which appears in very different contexts, but very different and important contexts. So on one hand, you can see that uh, why I claim that uh, symmetry can be used as, as a concept which could be used for integration of different uh, study of different uh, aspects of reality. And on the other hand, uh, we have that uh, there are interesting mysteries which uh, still uh, a way of uh, study and understanding. Actually, this one about Klein group, I uh, published a paper last year, basically, which I believe resolving the question. But anyway, uh, these were like examples and that's all what I, uh, what I prepared for today. And sorry for it is eleven or one. So yeah, yeah. It so it's, like... it's what 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 uh, which hour is it? Uh, uh, eleven. Oh, okay. So it's not yet the middle of the night. Not, no, yeah, no, no, it's not, uh, <laughs> not bad. No, I'm sorry because I I was supposed to finish one hour ago. Oh, okay, okay. Like it, it was it was very interesting to to hear for me, and I have like like I have tons of notes and like a, a lot of a lot of things I would I'd love to discuss with you. So I I. I so pause that the way to go about it will be that we'll keep inviting you for like you know conversations about many different things. I'll be very happy because I you know like the, the the curriculum that we are busy with developing. I believe like I I have an impression you would love the paradigm of this international baccalaureate. You know, first of all, when you are developing a curriculum for a, on a high school level, the whole 
problem of like there being a job, you know, like uh, out of it and kind of professional orientation is absolutely off the table, you know, because this is like, mm -hmm. uh, this is where people are exactly, you know, like supposed to get this all rounded education and understanding and integration and so on. It, and not yet like specializing professionally in, in anything, mm -hmm. but just deepening understanding understanding and, and interconnections. And, and this international baccalaureate is like very strongly, it's not a curriculum, it's a curriculum framework. And it asks schools to basically develop curricula which are integrative and interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary and so on. And people do it, you know, the way they, they can, but if they can, this is this is a wonderful play, playground for for this sort of a thing. So all sorts of like kind of institutional obstacles that normally kind of get in the way that people like are already specialized and divided here they don't exist, you know. And uh, so, but but I hope there will be there will be occasions for for us to uh, you know to talk about it uh, more and you know like implement all sorts of like. Uh, uh, instances of symmetry and other things that 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 you've been busy with in in this curriculum uh, if if we can just take a few more minutes and and ask if there are any questions or comments from yeah, sure. else. guys comments questions i didn't have a, a, any particular question I, I only could nod continuously <laughs> uh, so, so I completely agreed with 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 what uh, you were saying, and, and 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 I'm very happy to to be uh, uh, to be here actually because uh, I didn't understand much about this, uh, about the symmetry idea uh, to be honest. But uh, uh, the first part of the uh, of this uh, transdisciplinary approach is uh, mm. is very intriguing anyway. So uh, I'm I'm looking forward to hear you uh, more often about this uh, this subject. Thank you for uh, for that. I'm I'm sorry because you're like I am aware of. Uh, uh, I could see that time is <laughs> finishing. So uh, the part where I should al allocate more time was about symmetry. <laughs> and I know that uh, if someone didn't know this before, it's quite likely that they wouldn't know after my <laughs> presentation of it. But uh, I, I wanted to give some kind of basic idea that uh, symmetry appears in so many different contexts. Uh, maybe I, uh, one thing is that uh, my main uh, subject of my research interest and philosophical interest is information. Uh, symmetry comes with it and it is more like second. But why in this case I promoted symmetry but not information? The reason is in case of information there are too many unknowns, too many divisions on the views about what is information and so on. Basically, uh, uh, there are uh, hundreds of different def definitions of information. 90% um, are incorrect, logically incorrect. Uh, the others are totally opposite. So uh, this is something where there's too much noise mm -hmm. and engaging students in something like this would be really confusing. Where in case of symmetry, of course, there are many, as I said, there are many mysteries mm -hmm. uh, involved, but conceptually it is very clear. And it's been like for 100 years, this mm -hmm. is like a concept which is dominating all scientific thinking. So there is a lot of background in this. So I thought, well, symmetry is better because it is much less likely that student engaging into this will will be lost and will be confused by uh, too many opposite views on, on the subject. Plus, from the study of symmetry, you go into information through the notion of symmetry breaking, yes, and then you like you have everything yeah. else, you know, like, yeah. like coming yeah. into the picture. Yeah. Yeah, it looks it looks particularly interesting to 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 find symmetry, to discover symmetry, where those where now is the symmetry is 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 being expected, so that that could be a very interesting uh, thing. But I'm sure there's there's a uh, it 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 this it deserves a, a seminar by itself. I think. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> um, you know, like what what was interesting in high school, uh, the something which I expected it could be uh, something uh, interesting and uh, will uh, uh, stimulate some kind of curiosity. But I wasn't, 
I didn't expect that this would be so big, uh, uh, like uh, experience for students. I bought a, a bag of left-handed screws, like bolts and nuts, uh, uh, nuts, nuts. So they were uh, the, the, every student could play with this, and I could see that for them it was like something like eye opening. Mm -hmm. You turn it right, and it goes opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So these kind of things, which are I think it is very important to uh, to find some ways where students uh, something which is breaking uh, their uh, routines of thinking. Yes, and assumptions. Yeah. Yeah, and and in case of symmetry, there's a lot of things like like this which mm -hmm. can be found. Yeah, it's not an intriguing subject anyway, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for your uh, to, for your uh, talk. It was it was pretty interesting. So. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Thank you. So, uh, anyone else wants to say something? Or we're we're closing. It's already like it's already light. Yes. Yeah? So, so Martin, thanks so much, and uh, and I, 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 I totally understand. You know, like it's like a con continuous predicament that uh, like we have those windows of time to like talk to other people and like we have so much to to say you know <laughs> like in all the, like so it's like becomes very uh, very very dense and 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 intense but but you know like we just need to like keep coming back yes and mm -hmm. <laughs> and eventually eventually things will be communicated kind of understood you know unpacked and and so on and so on so um yeah so we are we are closing for now i will put the recording on the website hey you want to say something Oh, yeah, I just wanted to say a little thing. I, I in the in the chat, I um, uh, I just mentioned the uh, the shop where you can find this uh, Copernican Revolution book by Kuhn. Oh, yes. uh, so if you want to buy it, it's uh, to be buy it, to be bought there. Um, All right. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, and we'll see each other in some other occasion soon. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. See you. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Bye.